There we go. All right, welcome everybody. We're so excited that you're here. Um, I'm Christine Shoemaker and I'm the founder of Shoebox Projects, which is an alternative art space. Um, it's in the past, it was physically at my space at the Brewery Artist Community um, near downtown LA. And now it's online, you know, due to the pandemic. So um, we've been giving artists um, solo exhibitions and we've also been doing group exhibitions. And I love Lorraine's work. I'm looking at one of the pieces right now. <laughs> so that's in the show. Um, and, you know, so I, you know, I just wanted to be able to share her work. And somehow I don't even remember how the conversation got started, but um, somehow it worked out for a way to get her in the studio working, you know, because having a deadline is always good. So I asked her before everybody got here, I said, have you been creating new art since you finished getting ready for the show? And um, I'll let her talk about that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, with that, um, I will go ahead and introduce Lorraine. And um, Lorraine, if you want to go ahead and, you know, tell us for the audience for, I mean, everybody here, I think, knows you. <laughs> but if you want to talk about, like, maybe a brief history of, you know, um, your life as an artist and what you're doing today. Okay. Um, well, thanks, first of all, Christine and Shoebox Projects, because this was a great opportunity and, and always a good to have a deadline to make sure you're in the studio working. And it, it was helpful for me for that, <laughs> undoubtedly. Um, so I guess I would start, I mean, later on, we'll talk more specifically when you show the individual pieces, but just in general, um, I guess, is, particularly people know me, I've always been interested in houses and domestic architecture and uh, architecture in general, from houses to churches, warehouses. And um, the first houses I made were small um, sculptures. And then I gravitated, I did a, a several larger installations. They were kind of like stage sets really. And now I think they're getting a little more two-dimensional and um, painterly. Yeah, I'm putting, um, painted elements within it. And, um, but I have a feeling it will be shifting back and forth um, between the two. And the other day, as I was thinking about this talk, I was trying to think about like where, where the interest in architecture or houses started. And I think I'm gonna blame my parents because my mother was an artist who, she was trained at the Pratt Institute and, um, as a commercial artist and then eventually became a painter. So there was always a lot of interest in galleries. We, I grew up outside of New York City and we, she was always going into the city to uh, see art and very aware of the art world. And, um, and my father had a hardware store. So it's sort of a marriage between the two things, between um, this, uh, somebody interested in aesthetics and then somebody with a very practical um, eye on house and gardens and guess what is a hardware store except for something, a vehicle to um, maintain and improve your, where you live. So I think when I just, when I went to art school and it, it just became a natural thing for me to um, gravitate towards making art about the home. And um, I said, besides um, like my interest in, in the aesthetics of architecture and um, how they look, I, I just feel that also um, the facades of buildings can also be very expressive, like in terms of um, like a portrait, and I, and I come to, sometimes think of my work as some of these pieces are almost portraits of buildings, and they can be tidy or melancholy or uh, fanciful or um, sturdy or nurturing. All those qualities I think you can attribute to a building, and you know their personalities, and also the aspect of shelter is appealing to me. And I think in light of um, well, the past two years in the politics, I'm just speaking, I, as I was writing this out, I was just thinking that, um, you know, I kind of see 
my home where you know where I grew up uh, and the buildings related to that as sheltering uh, comforting and um, I now see that's like a more probably a reflection of my own privilege and uh, good fortune you know rather than intrinsic to the building itself so that's just something I hadn't looked at it that way before um, and also architecture um, it's like a, a vehicle or a blank slate for me for abstracting forms because I've always had a tendency to towards abstraction and it's only just really recently with this little interest in painting where I've um, that that's been shifting a little. Um, so it's sort of combined with I think my tendency to be rather matter of fact or um, uh, how would I say this? I, you know, I'm, I just, I don't tend to like make things up out of um, whole cloth. It's like, I need something to start with and, and a building or is a good foundation for me to start with. And, um, and I like using building materials. Um, I don't know if it's ironic or not, but I, I use them in when I construct a lot of these assemblages. Uh, linole I like in the piece, um, some of these pieces will have linoleum in them or, or um, wallpapers and veneers. And um, I, I use those as, um, a, a, as a jumping off point to have these materials. They, they inspire me, but it's also a way of, um, um, of manipulating materials um, leads me to my creative decisions, I should say. Um, and I'm also attracted to how different styles of buildings um, reflect cities and countries or my own memories of past homes uh, I've lived in. And so I was saying to Christine before that like the title of the show is A Home, A Personal Perspective. And it sort of has a double meaning for me because on one hand, it's about my uh, point of view and my memories of homes. And, and then it's also a little bit about, um, you know, my relations or troubled relationship with perspective um, as a means to depict space because I'm not very good at that. It's not like something that comes easily to me. And I think that's partially why I'm attracted to these pre-Renaissance artists um, using one point perspective um, and, so it's a, it's a play on word for those two things. And um, we'll talk about that more when I show um, some of my work. Um, and yeah, so my perspective on, on being home reflects my domestic life, um, past and present and beyond my own life. I think it's um, homes are part of our collective experience. Um, archetypes that um, I think are, endlessly adaptable. So it's, it's a rich uh, subject for me. So. Awesome. Do we want to jump in and start looking at some art? Sure. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Let me share my screen here. Um, can everybody see it okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So this, uh, um, the idea of this painting came from, is based on there's a series of three, um, what are they, uh, 15th century paintings called the Ideal City. One's in Baltimore, one's in Urbino, and one's in Berlin. And they were all three use one point perspective to depict um, a you know, 15th century version of what an ideal city was. And I have not seen these, but I was, <laughs> um, in researching, I, I was very interested in this and I wanted to do a version of LA as an ideal city. So I took the same proportions as these three paintings and, and then just put in kind of, oh, those like on the right-hand side, those buildings that are sort of made famous by Ed Ruscha's 
um, photographs of apartment buildings in LA and, and just a little bit of the Italian Cypress in the background and a little hint of the, uh, the Hollywood Hills maybe. And just some um, this architecture that for me was a little reflective of this area. So, um, you know, I like playing with the contrast of flat shapes um, against this obvious um, simple perspective. Um, so it's, and, and this was unusual because this one, it was on paper. I did three sheets of paper and um, I had never worked that way before. Um, so. And sticking yeah. with that, the Renaissance theme, we can actually go down and look at the Giotto pieces. Oh yeah. So in, in 2019, I went to Italy and I've always loved Giotto. Um, you know, uh, ever since I first heard about him in art school, and because I I, I was interested in his, his the flattened perspective, and also um, I don't know there was something that just always felt very concrete and and monumental about the way he constructed his buildings and the landscape, and particularly if you look at his work, um, they were always. Um, like the, the mountains were always faceted and, and looked very architectural. And then he had, and his attention to detail and his buildings were fascinating to me. They always, and he did have figures in most of his paintings, but there was something, um, uh, the buildings always seemed sort of isolated from the rest of the image. So in this one, um, a uh, good friend of mine had recently given me these uh, veneer, this material of wood veneer, and I just started building this this mountain a la Giotto in one of his buildings, and sort of uh, oh, and he also and his the way he depicted um, it, the greenery was also very strange. So I just tried to pick up on some of that, and that was my my tribute to him. Can I, can I ask a question on the? On yeah. What What are the rays? Is that part um, of the veneer or? That, that those paint? are paper that have a little bit of metallic to them, so oh, it's that's, catching that's the really light. Beautiful. I love that. Because a lot of them, he would have like the hand of God, or just you know some sort of, you know, some sort of religious thing. Of course, you know, I mean, I had seen most of his work in uh, in Assisi, so. Um, you know, there was the, the life of St. Francis. So there was a lot of religious, religious iconography. So I thought that was my little tip of the hat. <laughs> I love how you're playing with the register, you know, in an abstract way also, you know, by, um, you know, that the, you know, box, like, you know, it's kind of a picture in a picture almost. Yeah, I mean, he, I guess he was working in, in Assisi and, and the, he was working with the architecture and, and things were delineated are delineated in, in ways like that too. So and then your other piece. Uh, and then this one this one I went back into the studio to start the series and I was gonna do um, the theme I knew was gonna be also home. Big surprise. Um, I wanted to work really fast and differently. And so I just started to try it. I just wanted to keep it really simple. And I thought, well, I'm not gonna get fussy about how I do my interpretation of Giotto's building. Um, so I, I really just tried to do the most minimal um, version. So this was not so much a representation of Assisi, but it was, it was really Giotto's uh, interpretation of buildings, you know, so that's what, that was well, just a fancy one. I kind of like, I look at this, I kind of think, do you remember those books, um, This is Paris? I forget who the illustrator was, those books there from the, oh, I don't know, early 60s or something. They used to, like, this is from different cities. They're, they're wonderful children's books. Anyway, it kind of made me think of that. 
sort of after the fact. It was like my travel poster for a CZ. Well, <laughs> anyway, it was fun because then promptly after doing this really loose, fast one, I then started getting tighter and tighter. So I'm glad I got it out when I did. <laughs> uh, Vicki, did you have a question? Yes, I do. So what is the material, like the black and white kind of decorative material or the- Oh, those, um, well, let's see, the, um, the, the larger floral um, element is vintage wallpaper uh -huh. and, and also some of the others, um, Dec some are decorative paper or wrapping paper, maybe even that are, that are vintage. And some are from older um, books. And then the hot pink thing was from a parking pass to park in Pasadena for the Rose Bowl for the uh, the parade or something. So, you know, I just used um, materials for you know that I had really. Yeah. But I did, I I love using. Um, vintage wallpapers and papers and yeah. thank you yeah well i love with these how um you know like you started off saying you know you were practicing with one point perspective in the first piece and then these you know you're kind of exploring giotto's perspective and then of course you know this piece you're actually really playing with perspective by bringing it three-dimensionally into our space oh. So I know, I think was this one was before the rest of them for the most part for the show, wasn't it? Isn't it? Kind of an impetus. The, um, this piece um, was from last year. So it was, um, you know, I, ha I had the opportunity to work large and I hadn't done that before. So I knew I wanted this one to be, um, the theme of that show um, called Compass Rose was about how we find ourselves during um, the pandemic, how we all were dealing with that. And so I was kind of thinking about uh, like an anchor point or a compass point uh, as the home I grew up in. So I knew I, I started with the recreation of the front door of the house I grew up in, including the wood awning. It's sort of a faithful reproduction of that. And then I, I just put all these, some decorative, but also um, autobiographical elements that reflected my parents. So for example, with um, my father's hardware store, um, pegboard was also uh, like a very important material in the store, like hanging every, Thing, um, every tool and item from the pegboard and so I used that and and then the to the left of the door that cartouche was actually this the the um the sign that my mother had designed for my father's store which was called handy andy but I didn't want to put handy andy <laughs> on this piece so I just said made it be a welcome sign um and then the two um sort of like they're painting or they're from illustrations in a book I had saved from my father's store from Benjamin Moore paints that showed um, ways to have uh, use different color combinations in your home. This was probably late 50s or 60s. So I just, um, I recreated those. Um, and also partially this was interesting in that because this was the first time I had worked really large in a long time and I, I wanted to make it modular and have these different images combining to make up this one piece and, but I didn't have um, any one particular source material. So I had, I was kind of forced to, to paint the different elements for the first time. And then I really enjoyed doing that. So, so these, you know, everything in this are, you know, is hand painted. Um, I also then on um, the other, yeah, so you can see this, that's part of the um, oh, one. I did a couple of covers, uh, recreated these covers of Life magazine because one, they were, um, you know, they're reflective of the time that uh, of growing up. This was the World's Fair, which I attended a few times in Flushing, New York. And uh, that's the Unisphere. 
And, um, and but my mother also worked at Life Magazine as a um, paste up artist in the early years of her marriage. So Life Magazine had a, loomed large in our home. It was like the Holy Grail was Life Magazine. So I put in a few things. And then this was just, oh, my parents were, and I've inherited an interest in birding and stuff. So I, I included uh, these uh, bird identification paintings, so. Yeah, um, this, was, this was the, the self-assized painting was the last piece I did. And this piece start, this started out as a painting. And by the time I was finished with it, it's almost all been entirely collaged. <laughs> so, and I was, I struggled a little with, with this piece um, because it, the impetus was also to, I found some old, um, probably from the 60s advertising from a furniture company. And I, you know, I just thought that it would be a fun thing to play with. And this had extra depth to it. So I, I thought, and I could play with the flatness of the depth. Um, and then, you know, by the end I was getting kind of lost in it. And, and you know, I was, I felt like I almost wanted to have, um, like, you know, like the feet from a body or, or some like something, some remnants of something that had happened in this room. But then, you know, sort of, I felt like in a way the room almost looked kind of Hitchcocky in any way, like just like the absence of anything happening, but it kind of seemed like a set piece where, where something was either had happened or was going to happen. So I, I left it, but anyway, that was an interesting. Uh, so are, are these on, it says birch panel. Are you uh, painting right on the panel? Um, is, that, is that paper on the yeah, panel? Yeah, no, I, um, well, on this piece, the sofa size painting, I was painting directly on it. I, I like working on, these are those cradled uh, panels. They have, they're like two inches, an uh, inch and a half deep. And then it has birch ply on it. And I like it because you can paint on it and then you can sand it down and you can glue on it and, if, you know. I, so it's got a frame on the back of it. That's, that's the kind that you buy. Like a stretcher, almost like yeah. a stretcher. It comes that way, it has a depth to it. Yeah, but it's good, good. it's good for, um, you could just put a whole painting, just glue it, adhere to it, but these were actually made on it. And sometimes I use the wood grain on it, but it can, it stands up to a lot of abuse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, cause I've had to, if I've glued things down, I don't like it, I can pull it off and redo it. And so it's, it's very forgiving. So uh, this piece, uh, so I did two pieces that were, I took old paintings that I felt were unsuccessful and I sanded them down and I was going to start again. And then of course, I really loved how the backgrounds look in, the, in their sanded down um, state. And so this one, I think by this point, I was like, okay, I don't want to use the vintage um, wallpaper anymore. But I had the, I had some Mexican bark paper, Amati paper that I love. And um, I thought, well, I'll just kind of make house, very loose house forms. And so I started making these shapes. Um, and then two things sort of came to mind as I was doing it. Um, and maybe in the back of my mind, it influenced me. One was um, Hilla and, and Bern Beshen if that's how you pronounce their last name, who photographed water towers. Mm -hmm. they're, they, they're no longer alive, but uh, they did this very straightforward kind of um, you know, black and white photographs of water towers. They did other kind of buildings too, but they always did um, you know, these series of different architectural types of things. Um, and so, so that was on my mind. And then, and then I, I had, after I put these down, I hadn't divided it yet. And then I went back in and then divided it um, almost like a animation board or something. But I, it came to my mind of uh, uh, somebody who I had studied with 
in Chicago, who Ray Ishida, because he did a lot of pieces that were kind of loosely constructed on um, comics, uh, divide, you know, divided this way. And I kind of liked uh, how it, having them each confined uh, in a certain way animated them. And I don't know. So those, those were like two very different, but <laughs> like, uh, two influences, I think, on this piece, so. Yeah, I love what uh, Raghavir says about the lower right wind extending into the next panel also, or the above panel. Oh. It's in it... chat, yeah. Oh, okay, didn't see that. I don't think I could. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, I know, I love this piece, because, you know, I also saw the comic you know, aspect of it. And each one tells its own story, but is having a conversation with the one next to it or above it, you know? So yeah, there's this whole conversation going. It's a really great piece. Yeah, thank you. I, I uh, wanted to do more in this direction. I thought it was very satisfying. And uh, yeah, and I, I love the happy accidents of the, um, of the background. You know, that's another case of, you know, starting with the material that, that gives you something and leads you to a solution. So. Uh, how many of us like destroy past art <laughs> only to like do something on top of it? Yeah, there's, yeah, nothing's. And then the other one that kind of is a companion piece of that is the shoots and ladder piece. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's right this now. One. So this 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 was the first one where I had sanded it down. I was like, "Whoa, this is great! These are yeah, I love how this looks. The background and there are colors I would never use in this way, but um, I you know I was like, well, I can't just leave it as just the sanded down version.' But uh, so I had these old um, erector set um, buildings that I flattened and and cut up. And I started to put them down and I really like the contrast of them and the whole, between the colors of the background, um, it started to have this like a game board feeling, toy-like feeling to me. And so I just kind of pushed it in that direction and certain uh, house shapes started suggesting themselves that I sort of painted, like brought out and then further delineated. Um, and then it was also a question of the textures, like contrasting the um, the paint on these on the tin, and the, and then the, a flatter paint on the background. And and then for those who don't know, I used to do uh, copper enamel jewelry for a while, and so I had a lot of pieces elements of that left over. So I was like, okay, well those are kind of like game pieces. <laughs> so I started putting those in and. Um, you know, it just made me, I called it shoots and ladders because it made me think about that or like Candyland where you were to traverse this, um, you know, landscape in a very um, fun way. So it, it reminds me of a Tiddlywinks too. Oh yeah, I love Tiddlywinks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Up with that name. <laughs> <laughs> But those are all nostalgic games that you played at home, mm -hmm. which is the cool yeah. thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, I wrote in the um, in the chat how much I loved um, seeing the return of the enamel discs. Oh yes, <laughs> I know. Nothing, nothing dies for long. Really. Nothing goes to waste. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. If you keep things long enough, you will definitely find a use for it. <laughs> um, and, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Oh well, this was this was an earlier piece too, and this was just I had gone um, downtown LA one day, and I was photographing. So a lot, a lot of these like started from um, photographs that I took, and and this was just like how how minimal can I make this <laughs> uh, interpret this, and so that was just a uh, and then this these were cardboard. Uh, so there's slightly different depths to the buildings versus the background. So, so Lauren, what do you mean by earlier? You mean much earlier than these pieces that were like? No, th this was um, I think right before the show at the Neutra. Oh, really? 
Wow. Okay. So that was okay. like 2016. Yeah, that is early. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Okay. Early or yeah. Not super. I, I just have one small comment. It was the piece that was before Shoots and Ladders. It was the living room setting. Oh, yeah. The yeah, setting. that setting. You know, it struck such a chord um, that, like in my family household, we were relegated to the family room. Oh. The, the family or the living room or the dining room was for the guess, you know? so, right? so, so, no, so when you said something about like wanting to put people's feet or something like that, I go, oh no, that would have totally changed it. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. really, really, really uh, heartwarming to see this. <laughs> so it's, it's preserved in time, like for, for guests that never come. Yeah, that's funny. And I don't know if there's, is there another one or is that it? Oh yes, yeah. so this one. This was, um, this is kind of the piece that was there. One day I'd, I was driving up Figueroa and Highland Park and opposite the library is this great apartment building with garages in front. And it just so, it just had such presence and um, I wanted to, I, I feel like this was my portrait of tribute to that building. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm, I'm simplifying something I saw and yet, I, and then I'm playing with dimension, a slight dimension and flatness and, and the materials I think bring, bring it to, to its two dimensional conclusion, you know, like I use, um, parts of books and uh, linoleum tile and uh, cork samples from earlier days of doing decorating and <laughs> um, yeah. So I love how you use the different elements, you know, you don't like necessarily, I mean, in some places you do, you paint the shadow, but you also use like the different papers and the different cardboard as shadow itself. You know, which is, I love how you do that. Yeah, this Lorraine? also had different dimensions to it, yeah. Um, Lorraine, this is Yamasi. Hi. Um, hi, I, so I'm just curious, um, you mentioned a little bit about taking pictures. So do you source, you know, the, um, the content from, from photography um, or old pictures or just your memory of things? Well, yeah, I mean, some of these um, were directly from after I had taken pictures of them. Um, mm -hmm. And I, yeah, so then I adapted from that. And then others, um, um, well, like the piece of the installation for the Compass Rose, that was definitely just my memory of my home or my interpretation. So, but I, I have done a lot in the past that were based on photographs. I love, I like capturing, yeah. uh, um, just recording when I'm out, if I see a great building. Yeah, so. So like, I'm wondering, since you mentioned that you actually had, you know, been to Assisi, were there old pictures that you had that inspired some of that or? Well, unfortunately in the, the cathedral there, when it, you, you weren't allowed to take any pictures uh, inside. But I do, I had a lot of postcards and mm -hmm. books on it. So I have been looking a lot at a lot of Giotto. Um, but it, it wasn't a, I wouldn't say it was a specific interpretation of that. I just use it as a inspiration. Right, okay, yeah. Um, well, there's stunning. Oh, thank you. I think there was. Oh, yeah. And then this is the last one we have. This was a um, a neighborhood scene, just about half a mile from my house, and I just love the symmetry of these. Well, the garages, the houses are different, but just the way uh, 
<laughs> these houses were on the hill. It just, um, and then contrasting that with the free form shapes of the, uh, the trees. Um, and yeah, I know, th this was, this was like one of the first pieces where I, I started thinking about perspective because I had never done anything like that really before. And I was like, when I started, and, and th this was all constructed of different uh, thicknesses of cardboard. So every, um, every step is a separate piece of cardboard. And, um, and when I was putting those in, I was like, I felt like the person who had invented the wheel. It was like, oh my God, you make these, things and they get smaller in space and it's like look at you can create depth it was I really like was so like thrilled by it and then I, I just wanted to keep it though very simple and um I don't know it's it's just I find it humorous I guess um something about these that piece but I love the colors in these. It, it, it's so subtle, but I mean, it's all these tones, mm -hmm. but they all work well. They're quite different tones. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it, you really, you really pulled all those colors to work together. I think it's that that maroon sort of gray that helped a lot. I just love the, the colors in this. Oh, thank you, thank you. There's something very moody about it. So, I mean, I say moody, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's very ev evocative of a mood. It almost, you know, I don't like to compare, you know, artists and everything, but it, it reminds me of like hopper type uh, um, well, moods just without the yeah, people. Like, a little, uh, maybe the isolation or something, you know. Mm -hmm. And the desolation, like of the, you know, they don't, the homes don't look inhabited. Oh. but that mm. you know that there's just yeah I, I really like this one um I mean I like them all but I always laugh because I go I walk gonna... by these houses a lot and I'm always like when I go by I <laughs> I feel like these people don't know I have a painting of, you know I have this <laughs> picture of their houses in my house oh uh, yeah so I have something over do you feel like um all the changes in LA are have will inform further paintings. I mean, because, you know, architecture has just been so, I mean, yeah. well, you care, you care about, you know, really good architecture. So is, is that informing your work? Yeah, I know what you're, you know um, what I mean? like, there's, so, there's so many awful buildings going up. I used to, I remember feeling this like way back when I lived in, when I lived in Chicago and it was around the time that uh, it was like who killed JR was being like broadcast every, every like newspaper place that sold newspapers you'd see this these stickers and these front pages that said like who killed JR from the show Dallas for those who don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I just felt like I wanted to make up a, a big sticker at that point like that like sort of like sort of condemned or made, you know, said like, this is an ugly building or something and slap, like, you know, like when people like were destroying buildings, you know, like uh, I kind of wanted to uh, call attention to the, to the crime. Mm, um, anyway, so I, I still feel that way a little. Are there any other questions about the work? Anything we can, that's the last piece in the show. We looked at this piece originally. Yeah. I'll scroll. I had a question. Oh. Sure. Hey, Sarah Jo. <laughs> Hi. I can't see myself right now, but my, but I do have my uh, video on, I think. So um, Lorraine, I, I just love seeing this work and really love hearing you talk about it because I was lucky enough to see some of it recently, <laughs> to visit it in person. Um, and I've known Lorraine for a long time. So I, my question is a little bit about, um, it's a little throwback of uh, when you were doing your furniture work and if that is coming up at all in any way, obviously it's part of these images 
in, in different ways, but I, I think that the actual physical furniture and, and what used to do, I'm just wondering if there's any thinking going on um, about that, about including that, about exploring that again. Okay, well, for the, for, thanks for the question. For those who don't know, when I said I started off doing um, sculptures of houses and then I did installations, the installations at that point were, were I was making uh, like fake furniture. That's what I meant by stage set. And then I was putting them in a um, very shallow spaces or against a wall. But I was, I started doing these mock-ups of furniture and have, painting the walls before, you know, that's what I was doing then. And uh, it eventually morphed into actually, I was like, I, well, if I can do this, I can actually really, I can design real furniture. You know, I didn't have carpentry skills beyond doing the uh, facades of furniture, but I was able to get commissions to design some pieces. But that, you know, the practical end of it was, um, you know, was difficult for me I, and the business part of that. So I, I didn't pursue it, but I, I still, yeah, I mean, I love, I love furniture and I don't see myself going back to designing it. Um, but um, when I, this last summer, when I did do this large piece, I, it was really fun to do something big and then have, I mean, it only had that one aspect of it that had dimension to it, but, you know, I, I could definitely, I could definitely see going back to doing some more mm. like set kind of pieces. Um, but, you know, those are storage, a lot of that storage issues and mm. construction issues and, you know, it, it has uh, practical um, disadvantages, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is for sure. Sarah Jo and I had once talked about the idea, like I would do some furniture and she would do paintings and we'd have a show together where we would pair the two together. <laughs> a long time ago, we talked about it. Still a great idea. Um, that, <laughs> but I'm looking at the newer work that you've just been doing more recently and thinking about how, um, you know, you can take in those ideas that of your furniture you know I, I mean a lot of it is kind of referencing imagery that you're finding but you know I think you have your own ideas about what that furniture <laughs> well <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah that's a beautiful thought yeah yeah um So what are you thinking about these? What are you thinking about now? Well, I, I would like to, one, I would like to continue with the pieces that I was doing with the bark paper, maybe scale that up a little, um, but work, I don't know if I have any other found pieces that have a, uh, that I, I can, you know, sand down. I'll have to create my background, yeah. you know, I'm building up layers. Uh, and then working with that with the paper, I had worked. I had done other pieces with the, the bark yeah. paper before, and I, I just I love it. So um, I love the shape in that too. Love the shape. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, and um, yeah, who knows? I don't know what I'll, what will be next. It's always. I just really love how sculptural they feel, even though all these pieces minus you know some depth changes, but they feel really sculptural. And I look forward to seeing if that ha you know, continues to happen. But those pieces with the bark paper, especially, even though those forms are all flat, they have a really hefty feel to them. Those forms are so simple and they feel sculptural kind of floating against the blue. So it's really wonderful to see the other work kind of evolve to that simple space to let those forms really come forward. They're great. Yeah. It's great. It's a great thread and trail to follow to those. I really love seeing it. Oh, good. I'm glad. I was when I got the opportunity to put this work together, and I was knew I was going to be doing some new pieces for it, and but I didn't 
want to constrain myself to any one thing. And I, was, I saw Sarah Joe the other day. I go, does it look like five different people made each piece? But uh, no, the thread cool. is there. Yeah, especially with the blue Giotto, the sky that sky that's kind of fake, not fake. You know, blue, not real, not real. But it it's a thread that kind of pulls right into the that, especially the bark pieces and you feel that it's still sky even though it's quite gotten quite far away from anything that would be literally sky but you can feel the legibility of that sky continuing on oh that's great thank you i think too um uh, just building a little bit on what you were just saying lorraine is that you know there's there's like there's times when that's not so important i mean i the idea of this sort of consistency and that you maybe feel, oh, there's like five different people working here, but uh, in terms of the work, but it's like, they're all connected, all of that, as, as Lynn was saying, such a thread and through line. And even now looking at some of the older work in the context of mm -hmm. the newer work that you're showing, absolutely. And that, to me, that's like, you know, you want, you want to draw more out of yourself. <laughs> well, this is my personal feeling of <laughs> drawing more out and versus this kind of constriction of, you know, this needs to look more, these need to have a more uniformity or, or something, which is just your, it's just a, a way of putting a frame on it. It isn't necessarily how it's appearing at, at least it doesn't, mm -hmm. yeah, doesn't feel that way. So yeah. I encourage you to keep exploring like all of these <laughs> aspects. They're all- Agree, agree. Yeah, I, I agree too. and and talking to what Sarah Joe had said before, it's like when I see these, these works, I see aspects of your furniture in it, the proportions of the shapes, the way that you work with the paint. And now that you're starting to sand things back and having mm -hmm. all of this patina, like surprising patina revealed. I mean, I know <laughs> that that's the kind of thing that you were doing. And right. so I, I, there's a lot of joy. You could feel the joy in that discovery of this, like these unexpected, you know, shapes and colors coming through. I really love, and I love seeing it in contrast with the flat, you know, mm -hmm. of, you know, the kind of the flatness of, of that bark paper, which really isn't flat, but, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's just really beautiful. This whole, this whole series of works is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a really beautiful and rich and makes me really happy to see. It was a great really conversation between the pieces. <laughs> Uh, Monica, go ahead. And then I think Loretta also had her hand raised. I just think it'd be amazing if you did an installation that was an entire room and what you did on the wall, you extend to every single wall. And then you also create the furniture that would be in the room. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I need a, a, a Saudi prince to fund me for that. <laughs> Yeah, no, it would be, it would be fun. It would be totally, really fun. Or a grant. Yeah, yeah a grant, definitely. <laughs> um, Loretta, did you have your hand raised? Yeah, um, I wanted to ask what uh, medium did you use to um, adhere some of the um, different textures uh, together and to the, um, I guess, whatever, like you were working on birch at one time, I think you said, but what are you using to adhere? I've been using um, that acrylic, it's a Mattel acrylic medium to decoupage things and, and put things in my mixed medium. I'm finding that only certain things like certain stocks of paper, it works well with, but I was trying to do metal and um, other um, like found things around my apartment and it just wasn't working. So I'm at a loss to how you were able to apply different things on metals and jewelry. Oh, well, the metal on the, one of those last pieces of the shoots and ladder, I, I, ta I drilled holes through and tacked down with small uh, nails. But anything that's paper, I use, I think it's Lineco. It's a, you know, an acid-free white glue that's used in book binding a lot. And it's, it's just like Elmer's glue, I think, with, but it costs five times as much. 
but um, repeat that. I, How was it spelled? I, I think it's called Line. I think it's Line Co. Is the name of the brand. Okay. Yeah, and it's just a white glue that's pH neutral. You know, it's and it's water soluble. So when you mess up. And you, if you pull something off, you can just wet it and, it and you can get the glue off of it again. I put a link for it in chat. From, you yeah. can get it at Dick Blake. <laughs> and is there anything that you would not use ever? Any type of medium, any type of found object, anything that's off limits to you that you feel right now? Or? Uh, well, I mean, if for years I used to, when I made my furniture and the, the, the uh, artwork that was furniture, I was using enamel paints and like cleaning up with turpentine. So I, I don't, I don't use oil-based stuff now, but uh, I mean, my, you know, I used to uh, repair um, ceramics <laughs> and I used a lot, I, I inhaled a lot of lacquer and lacquer thinner in my time. So I, I won't, yeah, just water base. I try and stay water base. I mean, if I, maybe some really small thing I might use a little oil based thing on, but for the most part, it's just, yeah. But, and in terms of materials, no, I mean, nothing's off limits for materials. And what's your limit and how much you want to scale up? Oh. Uh, well, I'm limited by the space I have in, in my home. I can really, um, I've got like an eight foot by eight foot wall. Um, so I have to do like, I would have to do one piece at a time. I, I did the larger piece when um, a friend of mine, Lee Feinstein, lent me her studio for the summer and uh, I was able to work. I just expanded, it was great. But right now I'm kind of limited, so. Uh, but then, you know, if, if the opportunity comes or if I can create the opportunity, I would work larger on larger pieces. But um, you know, it, I, I was thinking like once I heard Lucas uh, Samaras talk and somebody was asking him about like, did he, he was doing the SX 70s and like, how did he feel about working small? And his response was like, what do you mean small? Like you hold it up to here and it, you know, it's your whole frame of references right there. So it's sort of like, what scale? <laughs> it's like, you know, you just do it what you have and, and uh, that's usually enough. I, mean, I, don't I got bumped know. out and oh. I was off, so I don't, I don't know what you said, Lorraine. I'm so sorry. It's in the recording. This is recorded, okay. so you'll be able to, <laughs> to listen to the recording. Yeah, you didn't miss anything. Yeah. <laughs> I really wanted to hear. I was panicking. Oh, my God. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, Lisa commented in um, in the chat, I love that this talk is connecting the divine, the Italian works, the practical, the hardware, the whimsical, the color and the found bits, and the things that are interesting because they're trying to be and those that have been forgotten, the apartments. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you. Now, now I really do feel like I'm at my own funeral. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's very, very kind. But I don't know. I I kind of just feel like nothing fancy here. It's all just kind of. I'm a pretty straightforward person. I think like, and I think it's just like my artwork is never going to be too too tricky or too. You know, it's just kind of the way I approach work. I mean, it's I don't know my lack of imagination or whatever, but that that's, I'm going with it. So that's, that's like, well, you know, you, you, you know, your, your weaknesses are your strength. And if it's, you know, if it's limited to one point perspective, so be it. That's good. That's what I'm going to have. So. Well, I feel in your work, there's work so much beautiful. depth and layers layering in the simplicity of it. 
And there, that's where the beauty lies also. That's right. Awesome. Well, are there any more questions or comments or anything for Lorraine? Um, thank you so much, Lorraine. I'm saving the chat, so I'll send it to you. So that okay. way you'll see all the comments and everything in okay. it. Um, yeah, thank you all for being here. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the show will be online for um, just about a month. So, and I'll be putting the um, this talk from YouTube in the exhibition online too. So you'll be able to, you know, watch it again or share it if you want or, you know, anything like that. <laughs> right. okay. Thank you so much. This is really great. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. As always. For all so with me. much fun. Uh, yeah, I know. This has been great. And I don't even like Zooms. So <laughs> Thanks, Lorraine. Great to see you. Congratulations, Bye. Lorraine. I just yeah. love it. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Everybody have a good afternoon. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Hi, Tish. Hi. Hi, Sally. Hi, Ron. See you guys soon. <laughs> I sent you a text. Bye.